Welcome, welcome, everybody. We are here for another episode of the third hour of power. Uh, this is your first time joining us. Thanks for finding us. And by way of information, uh, the third hour of power is a podcast where we talk about the third hour of church, particularly the lessons from the teachings of the presidents of the church. And this year we are studying the Joseph Fielding Smith Manual. This week we're going over chapter six which is the significance of the sacrament. Danny had such a good time last week. He agreed to come join us again. <laughs> and uh, I want to introduce to you Danny Rasmussen of Normans.com. Uh, Danny, for those of, that missed last week's episode and haven't gone back and re-listened because they should, introduce yourself. <laughs> Tell us a little, a little bit about yourself. Uh, yeah, well, shame on you for not listening to uh, every episode again and again. No, uh, it's a pleasure to be back. Thank you very much, Grady. I had a blast last week. I'm shocked that you'd uh, have me on again, but hey, uh, I'm honored. For those of you who don't know, normans.com, it's uh, a site just a few friends and I started a few years ago, a site dedicated to our purpose of trying to prove how freaking normal we are. Just as Mormons, it can be a little difficult at times, but I'll tell you, we have a great uh, group of contributors. I'm honored to be uh, with you today. And I'm honored to be able to be associated with the good folks at Normans. Well, awesome, awesome. So this podcast here, it's a production of This Week in Mormons, who is also a great place to go. If you love reading about Mormon stuff, go and check out their website and listen to their uh, their podcast as well. For this week, in talking about the significance of the sacrament from the section from the life of Joseph Fielding Smith, it talks about after 19 years of services as an apostle, he was giving his 39th General Conference Address. And he was the general authority for much longer than that. I have to think, you got to start recycling at that point, you know? I mean, 39 <laughs> yeah. talks. It's exhausting just thinking about it. Uh, he says in general conference, In my judgment, the sacrament meeting is the most sacred, the most holy of all the meetings of the church. When I reflect upon the gathering of the Savior and his apostles on that memorable night when he introduced the sacrament, when I think of that solemn occasion, my heart is filled with wonderment, and my feelings are touched. I consider that gathering to be one of the most solemn and wonderful since the beginning of time. And here it is for us. Every week we have a chance to do that same thing that the apostles did. One of the last things that Christ did, one of his last ordinances on earth was instituting the sacrament. Here it is our benefit every week to have the same opportunity the apostles did to partake of bread and water in remembrance of the sacrifice of our Savior, Jesus Christ. That is, that is hefty, man. That is a serious, serious commitment that we make every week. You know, and, and it's so easy to take it for granted. It's so easy to take it for granted for a couple of reasons. One, I mean, as Mormons, it really is kind of the only liturgical element of our Sunday worship that we ever participate in. And it's like, what, 10 minutes, 15 minutes of our meet three hour meetings, right? So just a short portion there. And it's just like a, you know, brief thing that we go through. Uh, and it's easy to kind of mindlessly go through this ritual, you know, it really is. I mean, we could, we've all been guilty of that, I think. And yet uh, that doesn't do it justice that doesn't do this ordinance justice uh, because of really how significant it is for the reason that you just, and president Smith articulated there that this is the la one of the last rites that the savior instituted here on earth. And he commanded us this do in remembrance of me, right? Do this. It wasn't like a, you know, if you guys have time or like, if you're thinking about like on Sunday, like if you could swing in for like 10 minutes like actually go to sacrament meeting, partake of the sacrament. That'd be great. Right? No, it's, <laughs> it's like, do this man, like do this in remembrance of me. I mean, we'll talk a little bit in, in a minute about the covenant is, but just if you take a step back and look at, at what this represents, oh, man, that is, that is profound and beautiful. Well, and I like that you say about how, you know, he commands us, you know, do this, do this thing, you know, often. And 
I always have a hard time when it comes like for state conference and for general conference and and even in some areas when they have temple dedications when we don't have a sacrament meeting for that week and it it makes a difference for me. I I miss it. I miss not taking the sacrament. I miss not renewing my commitment. I wish there was a way that we could somehow make that work, you know, in that sense. Yeah, seriously. I mean, we need a lot of like uh, you know, we didn't need a little loaves and fishes miracle to get through uh, the <laughs> conference center there, I think, to feed everybody. But. Maybe everyone can just bring their own little baggie, you know? <laughs> there you go. Okay, everybody, tear a piece. No, that's terrible. <laughs> we can cut that. Oh, gosh. Well, one oh, of the things boy. I like in, the, in that section, too, it talks, so he says that the person who absents himself from a sacrament meeting week after week, month after month, and nothing prevents him from coming is not loyal to the truth. And he talks about how they should want to show their love for the Savior. I, you know, I thought about as I go in certain callings and go do reactivation efforts. You know, you're calling right now. You're a, you're the ward mission leader, so I'm sure that's part of your calling as well. A lot of the times we go out and make invites for the fellowship or we make invites for the learning that's there or we make even, even invites to feel the Spirit. But I, I don't think I've ever invited someone to come back to church and take the sacrament to remember the savior and to renew their baptismal covenant yeah and yet that should be our central message right because what do we really have to offer i mean we have we have friendship and camaraderie and we teach great things out of great books but you can get that pretty much anywhere uh, what really is that was the thing you always hear that that said you know what can i get at church that I can't get at home exactly and 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 this ordinance really is the draw the draw like it's not it isn't, you know, the preachings of whoever's teaching Sunday school, what these clowns on this podcast said about, <laughs> you know, the lesson this Sunday. It's really, it really comes back down to, to this covenant, this promise. Um, and that's something that all, each of us needs in order to really draw closer to the Lord. Yeah, in the, section, in the second section, it talks about how we partake of the sacrament in remembrance of the atonement of Jesus Christ. Uh, we talked uh, in the lesson a few weeks back about the atonement and and what a awesome experience it is, meaning that it is awe-inspiring and, and, and it is humbling. And that, that is an experience that we should be focusing on as we take the sacrament. I like here in the lesson, you know, President Smith, he's talking about what he does during the sacrament and what he reflects on. Uh, he says that, but here we have the Son of God carrying the burden of my transgressions and your transgressions. His greatest torment was not the nails in his hands or in his feet, as bad as they were, but the torment of the mind in some way that is not clear to me. But he carried the burden, our burden, I added to it, You, so did you. So did everybody else. He took it upon himself to pay the price that I might escape, that you might escape the punishment on the conditions that we will receive his gospel and be true and faithful in it. Have that thought. That's the humbling thing. That's the sobering thing that, that helps when you remember the atonement of Jesus Christ. You know, there are all kinds of things that we can be thinking about during the sacrament, but that should be the major focus. Part of that is going to be, of course, reassessing our lives, trying to make new changes, but that change should be motivated by this thought that the Savior suffered and he took on this burden that was ours, that we created this burden and he carries it for us and that we need to turn it over to him because he's doing it willingly. And there's strength as we make a new commitment, as we love the Savior, we'll think about what he gave up. It makes us want to change. I think about sometimes like things I did as a kid. I was a busy kid. I was a good kid, but I was busy. But sure. there were some things I did that made my mom sad. Uh, my mom was telling me a story about how she was, basically, I was asleep and she was kneeling by my bedside crying and just asking me to be good. And it broke my heart. I had no idea. This is, and this is my adulthood. She tells me this story. And I had no idea that I had been so rotten. But the thing it made me want to do was be better. Even though I was an adult and I was out of my wily ways, I just thought, 
you know, my mom loves me and she she cares about me and I don't want to do anything that disappoints her. And I think that's the thing that motiv- can motivate us during the sacrament is we think about our Savior and how he is pleading for us to turn away from our, our sins and, and come unto him. It helps us to be better. I like at the end here uh, of, the, of section two, um, President Smith encourages us to help make the atonement of Christ real in our lives so that it's not just lost in abstraction, not just some, oh yeah, maybe that happened at at some time or place or level, uh, but it doesn't really affect me. He says in here, if we could see the savior of men suffering in the garden and upon the cross and could fully realize all that it meant to us, we would desire to keep his commandments. We would love the Lord, our God with all our heart and with all our mind, with all our strength. And with everything, and in the name of Jesus Christ, would serve Him. That is the powerful knowledge, right? When, when we can see not just a, an intellectual sense, like okay, yes, I understand that that happened, but when we can understand really our relationship with Christ and and how all that He has done is for us, and that, that changes things. That. It's no longer just like a nice story. It's very pertinent to how I go about living my life in emulating the example of Christ. Yeah, but of course, this uh, um, the ordinance of the sacrament is an external symbol of an inward commitment. Uh, Christ didn't do all this stuff just to say like, okay, you know, hey, I did it. You know, it's all said and done. You guys don't worry about a thing anymore. He's saying like, all right, now you... Do your part. You hop on board. This is your role here. In the in section three, it talks a little bit about it. It's our duty to thoughtfully consider the covenant we make when we partake of the sacrament. Uh, President Smith talks about four uh, specific obligations that we are bound to. He says, we first, we eat in remembrance of the body of Jesus Christ, promising that we will always remember his wounded body slain upon the cross. Two, we drink in remembrance of the blood which was shed for the sins of the world, which atoned for the transgression of Adam which frees us from our sins and uh, our condition of our true repentance. We covenant that we will be willing to take upon us the name of the Son of, uh, and always remember him. In keeping this covenant, we promise that we will be called uh, by his name and never do anything that would bring shame or reproach on that name. And four, we covenant that we will keep his commandments, which he has given us. Not one commandment, uh, but we will be willing to live by every word that proceedeth forth out of the mouth of God. Right. So this, this, all of these different kind of covenants in one. Um, but uh, really what it boils down to is, are we willing to get on board with Christ? There's so many things there that, you know, it kind of helps give us some guidance of what we should be focusing on as we, as we take the sacrament. It helps it give us some, some frame of reference. In that section, he talks about how, he says that I've seen two members of the church sitting together in a sacrament meeting enter into a conversation, stop long enough for the blessing to be asked like the water or the bread, then start again on their conversation. It is shocking to me, and I am sure it is to the Lord. And uh, that's kind of the section I was thinking about where he's a little more bold, and I think it's true. You know, I, I remember as being a, a young priest and passing the sacrament to the deacons, sitting with my buddies and chatting it up. And my dad, you know, he was a, he was our deacon's quorum advisor and teacher's quorum advisor. So he felt perfectly well within his rights to call us all aside, you know, and just said, you guys should not be talking during the sacrament. You are the example for the rest of the ward. You hold priesthood authority to represent heavenly Jesus Christ when you bless the sacrament. And if you think about the sacrament in the Last Supper, I seriously doubt that Jesus was chatting it up as he passed that sacrament around. And it changed us. It totally, you know, woke us up to the importance it is that we are focusing on the Savior. I think just as a symbol, I mean, as you look at it, you know, why did the Lord, why did the Lord institute it to have us partake of, of, of bread and water, bread and wine, bread and some liquid, right, to commemorate this? Why would he have us, like, ingest these emblems? We don't do that in any other ordinances in in the church like why would he why would he do that and i think that as a symbol of uh, biologically right i mean we in order to survive we need bread uh, food to eat and we need to be hydrated we need water 
and it gets down to a cellular level, right. it permeating every fiber of our being in Mormon vernacular that we like to use, uh, this atonement of Christ. And that is, that is a beautiful symbol to me of, of when I partake of the bread, I, I can think of, okay, you know, every cell that I am, that is in me, I want to be representative of Christ. I want Christ to be everything that I am. I want, I want to be everything that Christ was and is. I want to follow his example. And, and like you said, the symbolism of taking that into ourselves. There's things that we do on the outside, but that's something that we physically internalize. Yeah, and, and you know, it's also, it, it doesn't last. I mean, how often do we have to eat? How often do we have to drink? I mean, this is like weekly. Are we hungering? Are we thirsting for what we're getting, that sustenance from, from the sacrament every Sunday? You know, this was a great lesson. I am, I'm looking forward to sitting and participating in this lesson. And I hope if you are an Elders Quorum president and you have one of those teachers that is learning to be a teacher, call an audible and pick a good teacher because this is an excellent lesson. And, uh, and I enjoyed reading it and talking about it with you today, Danny. And I'm going to enjoy being in class, I'm sure. Uh, My pleasure, brother. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. Now, now, Danny, tell us, you know, last week you talked about Jimmer. Uh, what is something else that someone would want to look for on your website? You know, uh, we've talked about this before. I think the thing that people will most know me for, probably my greatest contribution to the world uh, in my 27 years on this earth, is my post about how Buddy the Elf is probably Mormon. I told my kids um, about this, and they, <laughs> they said, Dad, can we watch that one? And I said, yeah, yeah, when we get home, we can look at it. And they were all oh. jazzed about it. Yeah, you know, it, it's 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 great. It's wonderful. You know, our goal is just to prove, hey, you know, Mormons are kind of normal, but we're also kind of not. You know, and that was one of those posts where, like, okay, we're we're not quite normal. There's something a little different about us, right? We we, we really can relate to Buddy the Elf a, a little too much. Um, uh, but anyway, hey, it's uh, I'm glad I'm glad that it can maybe make a few people laugh and maybe get a few people to ask, you know, well, wait, why, wait a second, why are you Mormons so different? What makes you guys so funny? <laughs> and uh, quirky like that so yeah and that can be found on normans.com it's like mormons but with an n because we're normal mormons and uh and my website is www.this-mormon-life find me on facebook and on twitter uh if you search for us or just go to our website and you can find the links to it there also this podcast is a production of this week in mormons they are a great podcast if you haven't gone over and subscribed to them yet subscribe to them and to us uh whether you're listening to us on youtube stitcher or itunes uh go to each of those other places and subscribe as well so if you're watching on, on YouTube, go over to iTunes and subscribe. If you're listening on Stitcher, go to YouTube and subscribe and watch our video feeds. It's going to be a good time, and we appreciate you guys listening. We're thankful for our host, ThisWeekInMormons.com, and we are excited to meet with you guys again next month. Until then, though, on behalf of Danny, my name is Grady, and I wish you all a fond adieu.